Quran to some here, another go round with this official thanks thing we got going on here. Um, that's this county edition, all day edition here. That's what I'm getting to. Uh, we got the big homie um, jumping on here. Grew up in the same complex, actually a few few yards from each other. Actually, you know, got to just see his growth, his progression as far as you know the basketball player that he became. You know, um, just from early on. So I was fortunate to just watch. You know, pretty much every everything that's happened in his life early on, as far as just you know, be being a young boy, just um wanting to you know emulate him a little bit, wanting to steal some of his style. You know, and obviously he went on to accomplish you know great things. But I think probably the best thing he's probably ever accomplished him. He'll probably even say, just being a father, being a family man, and just a provider, what have you. There, you know, while um, we're getting to it about you know um his daughter, his daughter, who's actually doing some great things as well, too. Um, so hopefully he'll share some of that, you know, um, when that time comes up. But like I said, just got the big homie um, coming on. So I'm looking forward to it, just to um, shoot the breeze, you know I mean, take that walk down memory lane, uh, what have you there. So um, that's what it is, just hold tight. Wes, what's up, man? Hey, Ev, what's going on, brother? Nah, ain't nothing, man. How you doing? Good, good, my man, good. Um, you want me to use earphones or? Nah, we good, man. I mean, I can hear you loud and clear. You good? That's, that's just me with the headphones. That's just my, I'm just creature habit. I started using them, just don't take them off. So that's me. You know, I can hear you loud and clear. All right, that's good, brother. Good to see you, my man. Likewise, likewise. How's the family? Good, man. Everything's good. Uh, daughter season is over, so she came home real quick. So that was really good for us. So we got her this weekend. Hadn't seen her in a while, but everybody's doing good, man. Everybody's doing good, so. Good. Mom, dad, you know, they're, they're, they're good? Yeah, everybody's fine, man. You know, talk to oh. them this morning, and, uh, you know, they're doing good. How about you? How about everybody on your side, man? Everybody good? Nah, yeah, no, nah, thankfully, everybody's good. I mean, um, try to speak to everybody at least on a weekly basis or a little more than that, but everybody seemed to be holding up, man, definitely. Yep. Yep. Definitely, yeah. man. That's now, I appreciate it, man, you jumping on. I know, like, uh, I know we talked um, the other day, man, like I said, just something I just had a little hobby and then turned into something else, which is totally, I'm totally, like, grateful and, you know, humbled by just folks such as yourself just jumping on here as far as just to talk and take a stroll back a little bit, you know, um, and, and, and just have some conversation wherever it goes, you know. But like I said, I appreciate it, man. Like I said, um, you know, obviously – you know, you and I just, you know, I'm living a few yards from you pretty much my whole life here, you know, <laughs> uh, so uh, I actually growing up here, but, you know, um, so that's what it is. As far as growing up, did you, from that town from the beginning or you were somewhere else? Uh, well, for me, uh, it, it really was Dodd town from the beginning, man. Um, I, when, I, when I was born, my parents was living in East Orange over, I think on North Walnut, but it, it was like I was months old, basically. Okay. So I, I didn't even remember none of those memories. Um, all my memories come from Dye Town, um, okay. you know, from day one. Uh, friends from day one, um, you know, coming out on the porch. It was a, a, a few of us that were there at that time. Um, you probably weren't even born at the time. So yeah, knowing yeah. my age, but yeah, but my first memories of life and, and childhood uh, basically come from Washington Dodd Apartments. And that's where I was, to me, that's where I was born and raised basically until, you know, I went out on my own. Uh, how was it for you growing up? Um, Great. Um, I, I wouldn't change it, man. I mean, being an only child, you know, growing up in that neighborhood, it, it was like ideal because I had, you know, 25, 30 brothers basically and, you know, 15, 20 sisters, you know. Um, I never felt alone. Um, I never felt by myself, never felt isolated. I always had, you know, someone to play with, uh, someone to talk to, uh, someone to be around, you know, people knocking on my door to come outside or just walking out the house and, you know, people are there. 
Um, I always felt a sense of family too, you know, cause it was like, you know, we had families, we had like your family, we had the Dawkins, we had the Hardaways, we had the Washington, you know, the, these were my extended families, you know, that, that I, um, you know, got to grow up with my extended brothers and sisters and, and not having siblings. I did have siblings. I had a lot of cousins and stuff like that. I had a cousin that lived next door to me. Mm -hmm. But as far as like brothers, you know, um, and, and sisters, Godtown gave me that from day one. So I never, you know, felt, you know, alone. It, it was a great time growing up in Washington, Dot. I wish the kids had it like we had it today. I wish they had it back then. Yeah, no, I hear you, man. And obviously I can second pretty much everything that you just said here, man. And then in regards to sports, was it always basketball? Or did you have a love for anything else as far as when did you just start playing? Um, well, you know, Ib, in, in, in Washington, Dye, Dye Town, we did a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. um, we, we played uh, baseball in the parking lots. You know, our first fields were the parking lots and the cemetery, which is, you know, it's kind of crazy. But we did went from, you know, playing baseball, tag football, you know, that was a big thing for us in Washington, died in the parking lots. I'm going to be honest, my first love was football because of basically Washington died. Okay. Um, you know, my dad played basketball in the parks in East Orange and Elwood Park. So that's really kind of how I got interest, introduced to, you know, basketball was basically through my dad, um, who basically, you know, was pretty much a park legend mm -hmm. in, in Elmwood Park in East Orange. Um, so at an early age, you know, he put basically any type of ball in my hands. So when I was in Washington Dodd, I would play football, baseball, you know, whatever. And then, you know, the back where we had our basketball yeah. court, mm -hmm. um, when my dad wasn't working, you know, we were back there. He was showing me how to dribble with my left hand, you know, showing me how to make a layup. Um, so, you know, we just had a, a, an array of uh, opportunities to play any kind of sports, you know, um, you know, rest in peace, Chuck, you know, our boy yeah. Chuck, man, he, he was like my, my twin, basically, and he and I would play baseball, you know, in the driveway all day long, go ride bikes, go in the back, play basketball, run to the general store and eat Snicker bars and, and, and Pepsi's. Mm -hmm. So we had an array of, of, of just being athletic, you know, and then I think for me, it was just, which one did I gravitate to more? Mm -hmm. um, basketball was probably more prevalent to me because of my dad. Okay. Um, but also too, it, you know, I tried out for the high school football team at Immaculate. Uh, never knew that. Yeah, yeah knew one that. day, one day. And I was like, nah, I think I like <laughs> basketball instead. Yeah. Um, but I used to work out with Dominic Ferrara, the quarterback, the coach time, used to come yeah. me up. We used to go up to Cody Field. Me and Don Ferrari used to run patterns. And, you know, I did that for a summer. And then I said, when I went to tryouts, I was like, nah, I think I'm better at basketball. So, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, man, it was just being an overall athlete, man, is what Washington Dodd gave me. Um, and then as I got better at basketball, um, you know, our battles in the back, you know, that, mm -hmm. that basically made you a player. You know, you, you're playing against grown men. You're playing against the young guys. You're playing against yeah. kids your age. Um, and then, you know, that that really was was really, um, you know, my thing was just an evolution of being an athlete and then going toward the one that I kind of liked the best and, and excelled the best at. Nah, good stuff, man. Now, well, Little League, did, I was, did, did, did you play Little League baseball? Play Little League baseball up in Montclair. Yeah, I did okay. that. Yeah, so I, I took tennis lessons at the Rally Racket Club. Farouk okay. would know about that. Farouk and Baraka, we were all in the same tennis, uh, um, you know, class. Then I did Little League Baseball up in Montclair. Um, mm -hmm. I, I made the all-star team two years that I played. Hit a home run and one, and did, you know, so I did the little mm -hmm. baseball thing. Now, it was uh, the home run just because the kid missed the fly ball, and you just, I mean, or nah, did it go man. over the fence? It cleared I the fence. I played in Edgemont Park. And I hit it, I hit it into the pond, bro. I okay. hit it. I it just want to make cool, sure. Bro. I mean, you know, yeah, home no. runs, people try to, you know, you know, kind of like change the story up a little bit. I don't know if it was a bunch of errors and you no, made it around. Bro, okay. No, I, no, I got some witnesses. I hit my eyes were closed. I'll admit that, you know, the dude yeah. was pitching real fast. It was just one of those connects that just went out there. 
Okay. But, um, I did hit it in the pond from Edgemont. I hit it. It went out there somehow. I don't know how I did it, but, uh, but yeah, baseball's been there, man. Tennis, um, tried out football. You know, I, I did a long thing I didn't do was soccer. You know, there mm-hmm. wasn't much of that around, but. Um, again, the, the theme for me was just being an athlete, you know, bike riding right. to this day. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love riding bikes, man, skateboard, and, you know, and I still ride bikes now, but, um, it was just being an athlete and then just evolving to, you know, to what I liked the best, um, and, and where I excelled at the best, but yeah, baseball was in my, was in my, uh, past. Definitely. And, uh, I, I thought so. And now even with basketball, when did you start playing organized? Um, had to be fifth grade at Immaculate, you know, because I, I was one of the first orange residents to go to Immaculate. I was started at Immaculate in second grade. So, okay. um, and, and then after me, it was like the Hardaway, you know, Hardaway start coming and then everybody else. So we had a fifth and sixth grade team at Immaculate Grammar School. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually my dad coached, he coached my fifth and sixth grade team. Okay. So, Probably the summer before fifth grade is when I started really just putting down the tennis racket, put down the baseball bat and said, okay, you know what? I'm going to do this basketball thing. Um, They had a team at Immaculate Grammar School, Mm -hmm. uh, which I played on. And that's really where everything kind of kicked off for me with basketball is playing in the, you know, Catholic league in, 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 at, uh, at Immaculate. You know, so we played Lady of the Valley, you know, we played um, a couple of St. Rocco's, you know, we played against those schools like that. Um, so fifth and sixth grade is when the whole organized um, thing started for me. Um, and, you know, it, it was it's tough playing for your dad. You know, you know, my dad, he, he's yeah, a, yeah. a competitive dude, right. um, but but a loving dude, you know, so Absolutely. he, he um, you know, he pushed me a lot. But I thank him for it because, it, you know, it, it made me the player and the man that I am and, and gave me a lot of confidence. Um, you know, so fifth and sixth grade, you know, started it. And then we had a pretty good eighth grade team, seventh and eighth grade team. Um, mm-hmm. Started to get a little height, you know, which was odd because my parents are short. But then I started getting, you know, I was like 5'11", almost six feet, you know, in eighth grade. And, um, you know, you start touching the rim. You start doing that stuff in eighth grade. And. Um, actually first dunk was in eighth grade. So once you start achieving those things at that grammar school, um, level, you know, you really start realizing like, okay, maybe this is something I could do, you know, at the next level in high school and, and and be good at it. So that's kind of where it really started that immaculate grammar school dad, uh, Mr. Boston, Lance Boston's father, he was my seventh and eighth grade coach. Mm -hmm. Um, so they all, you know, playing with Lance and, playing with Mr. Boston, um, you know, gave me a lot of confidence, you know, going into high school. Now that dunk, was it in the game or you just talk about just messing around? You just, you, you finally caught that first one. Was it, was it during well, the game? I'm going to tell you my dunk and a person that you, I don't know if you get on this call, Mike Boyd from Orange. We both did our first dunk on the same day in youth games practice at East Orange High School. We okay. Were in eighth grade. Okay. Uh, we had tryouts that day and I, you know, I had been running and touching the rim and, you know, dunking uh, tennis balls and stuff like that. I had never really dunked a basketball mm-hmm. and we went out for the uh, youth games tryouts at East Orange High. And I know you were part of the youth games. I think every, you know, athlete in Orange was, or, or Essex County has kind of went through this youth games uh, program, but we were in tryouts and we were having doing layup lines. And, you know, Mike Boyd, you know, Mike is known for dunking. Um, I'm looking at this guy. He's a little shorter than me, you know. I knew Mike anyway. I heard about him and knew him a little bit. So, you know, we hadn't really got as close as we got afterwards, but I knew about him. And, you know, so the competitive person I was, I'm seeing him and he's going up and he's touching the rim, touching the rim, you know. Mm -hmm. He goes up, he throws it down. So I'm like, okay, you know what, I got to make this team. So I went up. And I threw it down. And yeah. you know, so, that, so it was funny, like when I see him and we talk, we all that's the first thing we always talk about is, <laughs> yo, our first dunk was in that in youth games uh, tryout. And I was like, yeah, man. So, um, you know, just the competitive nature, you know, I knew Mike, he was from Orange on the other side of town. You know, we were from, you know, Dodd mm-hmm. Town. Um, 
all of our friends went to high school with him and I was at Immaculate. So yeah. I always played with a little chip on my shoulder because I always had to prove, you know, I was the Catholic school boy. So I always right. had to prove that, that I could play with the kids from the city high schools, from Orange, Scott, Shabazz, you know, East Orange. So it just raised my level. Um, and, and that day uh, really goes down as one of the special days in uh, me playing basketball, dunking the first time, basically in eighth grade uh, with Mike Boyd, you know, and that's kind mm -hmm. of our connection starting up, going on, going forward through high school. Nah, 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 nah. It's things I didn't even know, man. And now you <laughs> yeah. mentioned that youth games. Before the youth games or even getting up to that point outside of the playing at Immaculate, did you play any other, did you start AAU back then or you, AAU was a little later on? AAU was later on, man. It, it was a steady diet of the back. And for okay. people who don't know who the back is, the, back, the back basically is, yeah. was my AAU. Um, okay. Every day, coming home from school, finishing the homework, getting the, get to the back, start balling. And whoever was there, it didn't matter. Yeah. If it was the old heads, mm -hmm. getting in the game. If it was the young ones, you playing with them. If it was your peers, all day. You know how that was. And then Saturday mornings, crack of dawn. Wake up, you know, if it wasn't organized basketball, it was playing in the back. And then what happened as you get older, you know, our, our neighborhood was connected to like three different cities. You go out one way, you're in Montclair. You go out one way, you're in West Orange. West Orange, you go out one East, way, Orange. You're in East Orange. You East go out Orange. one way, you're in Orange. And you got so, Glen Ridge too. Glen you know? Ridge, right. You go up that way. So that became my AAU as well. Every day we get on the bike. Ride up the mm -hmm. Montclair play, mm -hmm. ride up the Glen Ridge play, ride the West Orange play. East Orange, we had two of the major parks right near us, Sobel and Wasson. Wasson, yeah. Right there, you know, Canterbury, we played there. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, Nishawane, played there, Glenfield, you know. So that was my kind of filler for AAU before AAU started, was playing in the back, venturing out to West Orange, Orange, Orange Park, you know, mm -hmm. Savo, Wasson, and playing against all the guys from Essex County that was local. And, and it was funny because most of the guys, and as you know, we played in the park, we ended up playing against in high school, you know, right. basically during right. the season. So AAU didn't start for me until sophomore year um, in high school. Okay. Um, now hold hold that real quick. Uh, now the whole youth games, mm -hmm. can you just, who's on that team? <laughs> if you, if you, who's on well, that? You, you, you know about the youth games. You've been a part of that. And I never, know, I didn't, I never played. You didn't play youth games. Game. Nah, I went to, um, I went to a trial, and I just got on my like, nah, I'm good. I, I saw like, you know, kind of think I was gonna make the team, so I was like, I mean, I'm, I'm bound out now. Before I ain't oh, want to make right. it all the way through and not make it. So I think I went to like one down in East Orange trial or what have you, and I was just like, yeah. Yeah, I was like, nah, I, I see these folks around down there. Later on, you did, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Well, well, youth games was before AAU, you know, and honestly, I loved it. It was like an Olympics. It was like a youth Olympics, basically. Um, we still played teams from all out of, you know, all mm -hmm. over the country. Right. Uh, but it just wasn't oversaturated like AAU is right now. Um, but our team, and, and this could be a debate, and you had some folks on probably some calls that, have been on some youth game teams. I would have to say we had one of the better youth game teams ever in history. And you might get some, some debate on that. Yeah, but, but that's the fun of it. That right. So our team consists of myself, uh, my partner, Mike Boyd from Orange. Um, I'm going to name Bobby Hurley. Yeah. Jerry Walker. Um, there was a young man from Wayne Valley, left-handed redhead kid. Probably I saw put 46 points on Clifford Scott by himself named Mike Zielinski. Uh, Marty Higgins, younger brother, Mike Higgins, mm -hmm. and Glenn Ridge's Dave Kennedy. The Kennedy, uh, yeah, yeah. Like a 6'5 point guard. Then we had like another kid. like a pitcher kid, too Dave. in high school. Yeah. Yes, and then we had another kid, Chris Jordan from Plainfield, oh. who I thought was the best player I had ever seen in my life. <laughs> Funny you mention him, because I actually I talked to Ira and he uh -huh. brought him up, and I just oh. remember he went to St. Anthony's that freshman year. He got yeah. jammed up or something, yeah. something happened. He Brother. didn't go, and Brother. he went to, like, Dickerson. Like, like, I remember just seeing him 
Um, I think he came to the North Wild later on, uh-huh. on jumping around. Uh-huh. But I was like, yeah, this guy, he's ridiculous. And I know Brother. he just life, life just caught up to him early. Yeah, man, it, it was a shame. Chris was the first six six guard slash person I had ever been on the court with. That it was six foot six legitimately, uh-huh. but it could do everything. And the funny thing about it, we used to laugh at Chris because he would come to practice with some shell toe Adidas, fat shoelaces untied, <laughs> with a fisherman hat on, white beater, eating a snicker bar, and could ball better than anybody I had ever seen. Giving it um, to everybody, yeah. Yeah, just a, it was, I mean, you think of the names that I said on our team, you know, you got an NBA player. You know, mm-hmm. Bob Hurley, um, you know, uh, Mike Boyd, you know, one of the best players ever come out of Essex County, mm-hmm. uh, Oak Hill Academy, West Virginia. Um, you know, Mike Zielinski went to Columbia, but I told you, I saw Mike Zielinski put 46 points on Clifford J. Scott, and they had the best team in the in the, yeah. in this county at the time. He was by himself, uh, left-hander, uh, just silky smooth. Um, you know, Dave Kennedy was 6'5". He was a point guard. Um, you know, we, we just had, you know, Jerry Walker, Jerry Walker was basically a man amongst mm-hmm. boys, you know, Jerry was six, six, you know, basically built, um, our era was, you know, we played against Kenny Anderson, you know, that's who we played, yeah, against. Yeah. The, Ga- uh, the New Yorker, I think it was the Gaucho, was the guy, yeah, I think it was the Gauchos they had at that time, but that he played for, but AAU wise, we went down to Alabama, um, you know, we playing against Kenny Anderson, you know, Washington DC had a stacked squad at the team at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that youth games was probably the start of me knowing that I could play yeah, you know, at the next level with some of the elite players because you know these guys that I saw and were playing with, you know, you know, Bob and Jerry, Mike Boyd, I already knew, but mm-hmm. then Chris Jordan and you know Dave Kennedy. You know, I knew like these guys were gonna be playing college ball. Right. Or and if now, I could play with them, you know, I, I knew I could play with anybody. Now, did y'all win it all? No, we didn't. Uh, See, that's the know. argument you're going to get. Uh, <laughs> I know. I, I know. had, uh, I know. who was it, Alan Watson and them. I had them. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, they won it all when they, they won. They won it all? They won it all, yeah. Well, tell them they didn't play against Kenny Anderson <laughs> and Robert Wardan. We had some seven-footers that we was playing against. And, mm-hmm. you know, Kenny Anderson basically was, you know, a living legend pretty much. So, I think we came in, we, we lost to actually uh, the New York team. I think we were in the semifinals. And Newark had a team down there. It was funny. At that time, I didn't know any of them guys, but Derek Bobbitt was on that team. Yeah, he now that start, I think right? back, uh, yeah. um, Sean Evans from uh, Union Catholic was on that team. I didn't even know Newark had a team. I didn't even know those guys until later on. But um, you know, we we made a good go at the, uh, the youth games. We we weren't blown out. We I think we might have came in second or third in that. I believe it was. Okay. But uh, we were going up against some NBA or some future NBA players. So that'll be my argument with Al. You know, I'll yeah. see him probably around. But um, you know, if that's the thing about like where we're from, you know, we we got mad respect for the generations before and after us. Mm-hmm. But it also pushed us to be the best, you know, players, um, you know, at the time. Um, you know, our time that we played, you know, Jersey had the best high school team in the country with St. Right. Anthony's, um, you know, with Bob and Jerry at that time. So that just gave me a lot of confidence when I played anywhere. You know, I'm from the state and really the co- county that had the best players in the country, so. Nah, absolutely, man. So you do youth games, you get to high school, you, you play varsity as soon as you, um, t- turn into a ninth grader, or what is it? Is it a progression, or what they have you doing? It, it was um pretty early on. Um, I had I, I know in the summer we used to do summer workouts. I was working out with the varsity. I played in the varsity summer league over in Bloomfield. Um, with them mm. at the time, uh, Miles Holt was on the team at that time. You might not know these guys. Yeah, I know the name. I remember the yeah, name. Uh, Pat Bruner. Um, he was on. They were seniors. Um, at the time. Um, and I started out in the summer league with them in Bloomfield. We were playing against uh, a guy named Ala Abelnabdi that went to yeah. Duke. Yeah. Um, actually, first time I ever seen somebody that tall. He was like 6'9", you know, um, and really good. So 
you know, right from the start, you know, I started playing a little, you know how they do the JV and varsity quarters. Mm -hmm. You know, I played a couple of quarters JV um, and a couple of quarters varsity. I did that up until I think it was the um, Benedict's JV tournament. We played in that. And I did pretty good in that one. And after that, I think that was like right before Christmas or something like that. Okay. After that tournament, I think that was the last JV game that I had played um, was the Benedict's tournament. And then, you know, pretty much started playing varsity um, right away, uh, which was which was great because I had some good guys to play with. Lance Boston was there, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, and I got my minutes, you know, I got my minutes. I was able to eventually squeak into the starting lineup, you know, toward the second half of the season. Okay. Um, and then, you know, ever since then, you know, been pretty much playing, you know. Um, but, um, you know, I got an early taste in the summer league and then, you know, just a little bit of JV and, um, you know, and then, and then varsity started soon after that. Now, was Coach Fest there your freshman year? Was he the head coach then? Too? Yeah. He was yeah. the head coach? Okay. Yep. Coach okay. Fest, Coach Ryan um, was my coaches all the way through. Actually, Coach Fest and Coach Ryan kind of recruited me, so to speak, out of grammar school. I was going to ask, were well, you going to go somewhere else? Did you, well, uh, Macklin was on, that was pretty much it. Well, yeah, I mean, the thing was, you know, we had the three Catholic schools, you know, and I, I figured I wanted to stay to Catholic schools. We had Essex Catholic, we mm -hmm. had Seton Hall Prep, and we had okay. us, you know, those were the three. Um, I applied to all three, got accepted to all three. You know, I talked to all three coaches, but having gone to Macklin Grammar School, you know, Coach Fest, Coach Ryan had a little closer um, connectivity to me. They could come mm -hmm. to all the games, come watch me play, you know, basically we're right next door. Um, and for me, it was just the familiarity, you know, of, okay, you know, I already know a lot of the people at the high school, you know, being in eighth grade, mm -hmm. um, I already kind of play with them a little bit in open gym and summer league, you know, coach Fess and coach Ryan, you know, kind of made a nice connect with my parents. Um, so it was more of the familiarity of it. And, you know, developing that relationship with them early on. Um, and it was just like a no brainer. I mean, I could have went to all three, um, but I'm glad I went to Immaculate. Nothing against Essex and, and Seton Hall Prep. Um, they became rivals later, but. Um, they had no, they had no girls. That, that was one of the things too. It, that was one <laughs> of the big things too. It was kind of like, okay, I don't know. Could I go to school with all boys? I've never done that before. It wasn't no girls there. So yeah. that also had a lot to do with it as well. Um, you know, just not knowing how to go to school without having girls around, you know, it was kind of different, you know, yeah. um, but, um, but yeah, that, that's really how that worked with, with the basketball. Um, it, it was just a familiarity um, relationship with coach Fest and coach Ryan early on. Um, and then, you know, Girls, <laughs> basically. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. I didn't even know. So you wound up starting towards the end of your freshman year of varsity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. team wise, like, you know, freshman, sophomore year, you guys had success as far as like winning records. I mean, you had winning records, but like, you know, was it, you know, what you thought it would be? Yeah. Yeah. I've always, uh, you know, always been on a winning program. And I think, you know, our tradition at Immaculate right on up to you guys and, and Gil Ross and Cheeseboro and all those guys, you know, we kind of set, we kind of brought Immaculate on the map. You know, it was a little small school up in, in, in uh, Montclair, you know, you have Montclair high. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of my goals was always to put us on the map. You know, that, that was my thing. Whenever I played, I wanted to rep us. Um, we always pretty much won conference championships at the time. Um, county championships, as I got, we got older once Tish and Reg, you know, we got that team together. We started going further into the counties, but mm -hmm. early on, it was like baby steps, you know, uh, first round, you know, we might play, win, you know, lose second round, you know, then sophomore year go a little bit further, you know, mm -hmm. then once Tish came in and Reg, you know, kind of came around, Reg had an injury early on, came around, you know, we had Jason Clemente, you know, all these other guys start getting a little better. Kobe Sanders, rest in peace. Right. Um, you know, these guys start getting better. Jamal Guatney, everybody, you know, we start going further, you know, in the counties, you know, mm -hmm. and in the states. Ultimately, we always run it into either St. Anthony's at the end or, you know, somebody like that. But um, always had a, a culture of winning, you know, never really had any losing seasons. 
Um, mm-hmm. And I just saw it getting better each year. Um, and, and always play, like I said, always play with that chip to prove who we were, you know, who Immaculate was. Now, I know um, I have an opportunity to catch up with um, Latish. I did say I know I had the opportunity to be in high school for a year, senior year. I was a freshman. Mm-hmm. And I know, um, and I told him, I was just like, you know, for lack of a better word, I, though y'all won, I still felt as though y'all underachieved that senior year, you know what I mean? Uh, and, and I was joking with him. I knew like the Achilles Hill, you had two losses to Seton Hall that year, the Christmas yeah. tournament, and, and then in the counties, they got yeah. you. And then even in the States, I mean, I guess y'all just didn't show up that one day and uh, and they got you. I don't know who y'all play. I don't know if it was St. Mary. I can't remember. St. Mary's, Jersey. St. Mary's, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I just I, felt I, as though you, under, you guys underachieved a little bit. Even though ranked in the county and all that stuff, I still felt team-wise I could have did a lot better. Yeah, we that that year we we hit a couple of walls. Um, you know, yeah, we we definitely had the talent, no doubt about yeah. that. We had the size, we had the talent, had the athleticism, we had the skill, we had the bench, we had, you know, we had a lot. Um, you know, basketball is funny, man. You know, some days if, if certain things just ain't clicking or you're not coming to play, or or another team is coming to play, or you underestimate somebody. You know, they can bite you. You know, we never got blown out by any of those losses. They were all very close losses. Um, the Seton Hall ones probably hurt the most, you know, because one, they were rivals. Two, they were a couple of games we should have won, you know, and it, it was a play here or there, a bounce here or there that, that kind of hurt us. Um, you know, the county game definitely hurts because, you know, you win that game, you're playing for county championship, you know. Um Christmas loss wasn't, you know, too bad because we beat Linden that year, who was ranked number nine in the state. Good. We beat okay. Linden the game before Seton Hall that we lost to in the Christmas tournament. So, mm-hmm. you know, again, ups and downs. You know, you have right. that high, and maybe that could have been it. We were high because we just beat the number nine team in the state, you know, mm-hmm. Linden. And you kind of go to Seton Hall, and you're kind of like, okay, well, we just beat Linden, so we can beat Seton Hall. So, you know, some, that could have been it. Right. Um you know, the St. Mary's game, I think we underestimated them. I think it was more of, okay, looking to St. Anthony's, mm-hmm. but we need to get past St. Mary's. And they were hungry. You know, they were aggressive. We had never even really heard of them. They weren't really, you know, a well-known team. But as you know now, you know, they were a pretty good team in that Hudson County area. Right. Um, they were just aggressive and just, a, you know, someone I think we didn't expect to be coming at us like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, you know, again, having St. Anthony's after that, you know, sometimes you start looking forward to, you know, and I know we were, you know, because we probably matched up the best with St. Anthony's with that team with myself, Tish, Reg, and, uh, you know, Cohen and, 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 Mm -hmm. you know, and and Sanders, we probably matched up the best with St. Anthony's with that squad. And we might've been looking a little bit ahead of them, you know, ahead of Jersey city. They shocked us. St. Anthony, St. Mary shocked us. Um, you know, they had a one big kid. He was about six, seven Spanish kid. He was pretty good. Yeah. Um, he played this three, two zone. Um, he was at the top of the zone, you know, really? that kind of, okay. yeah. yeah, that kind of threw us off a little bit. And they were just Hudson Kitty, Hudson city kids. Like they didn't mm-hmm. know who we were, you know, they didn't care who we were and they just came out and ball, you know? Um, and I think we might've maybe just, you know, took them a little lightly, didn't come at them like we should have and maybe looking a little further at, at St. Anthony's instead of taking bit care of business that day and then, you know, getting getting a chance at St. Anthony's. Now, this with St. Anthony's, I know the year before y'all played them in the, in the States, it was the year before y'all. Yeah. And now, how was it just running back into to some old buddies from, you know, eighth, ninth grade, a whole it's, different world? Yeah, it, it's crazy. I mean, you still got to connect, you know, but, you know, lives go different paths. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at that time, St. Anthony's had, you know, they, they were nationally known, you mm-hmm. know, so Bobby and Jerry were, you know, nationally known guys, but they know you, you know, um, mm-hmm. even Bobby's uh, brother, Danny, who, you know, is a coach. Now I coached him at Seton Hall uh, basketball camp, you know, so, yeah. you know, you, you still know each other, you know, it, it's kind of a brotherhood that you develop in, in our Essex County basketball, you know, all the guys yeah, yeah. you play with, um, you know, you still once you run into them later on, even to this day at my age now, guys that I play AAU with, you know, while I'm at my daughter's games, I'm running into them, you know. Oh, and I'm sure, yeah. That bond is still there. It was always there, you know. It was 
yeah, we knew each other, piece you up, dap you up, and then, you know, you play. But um, they knew who we were. We knew who they were, you know. Um, but it, it was – it's it was you knew you were going to run into each other mm-hmm. throughout your career. You know, you yeah. just kind of knew it was going to happen at some point you play them in high school. Um, you know, so we, we had the privilege of, you know, playing them now my junior year. Um, you know, I, I really wanted to play them my senior year. You know, that, that was the big year I wanted to play them. But unfortunately, we didn't. And, uh, you know, yeah. life moved on. Now, you got, uh, obviously, you said later on, you start playing you junior and senior year. So how was it for you, man, going down to that North Wide, walking them steps, going up to that gym, man? Like, how was it for you, man? I mean, I know for me, I played, I only, I only played, I think it was like 13, 14, 15 uh-huh. Something like I didn't play later on, but just the experience and me just, you know, uh, I know I got like a cheat code with some of this here, but <laughs> as far as just sitting there watching you guys like practice after we got done, you know, practicing or what have you, man, it was just, just to sit there and to see all you guys, the guys that you read about, you hear about, you lived it, you was there, man, just kind of, what was it for you? It, it was life changing. Um, you know, again, it was, you know, my, it kind of evolved from youth games. Cause you, once you play youth games, you kind of started getting connected with people mm-hmm. and knowing where different tryouts were. Um, AAU was different back then in Jersey. It was only three AAU teams you could play for. It was Newark Y central Jersey or the road runners. Yeah. You know, that was it. Mm-hmm. You know, if you South Jersey, you had to come up and play either with central Jersey. If you were, you know, North Jersey, you coming down to the North Y, you know, if you, or, or the road runners. So um, it wasn't a lot of choices. It was like, okay, you got to go there, put up and or, or not play. Um, for me, it was the biggest, I had two challenges in, in basketball in high school. It was one playing AAU for the North Rams and two playing in the Elmwood Summer League in high school. And we can talk mm-hmm. about that later, but back to AAU, it was the biggest challenge for me and the most exciting challenge for me. Like I wanted it, I wanted to play it. Um, I went down as a sophomore, um, you know, I had been playing varsity, so I wasn't too afraid, mm-hmm. but I didn't think anybody really knew who I was. I mean, you know how the tryouts are down there. It's 5,000 ballers mm-hmm. from all over in that gym. And first day is just open run. And sometimes I say, God has a hand on your life on how things happen. First day of tryouts, I'm a sophomore down there. You know, I don't know if anybody knows who I am. I know I played at Immaculate, but the first open runs, I get picked on a team with three, maybe four first team all state players to play. Okay. And we ran open gym and we did not lose. So I got a chance to play all day long in tryouts with this team. And we just kept winning. We never came off the court, never came off the court. Marquise Braggs was on that team. Corey Floyd was on that team. You know, these are guys, like you said, you read about. For some reason, I get picked to play on the team with them. It was another guy um, from Linden. His name was, uh, I think his last name was Worthy. Another guard. He was really good. Um, We had the bomb squad, and we just kept beating everybody. Every team they put out, we stayed on all day. And that gave me my exposure. I think that was my breaking point in Essex County, Newark Y uh, basketball. I was I got a chance to play on the, one of the best open gym teams in New Jersey, and I got a chance to show myself. Um, so I made the squad after that day, mm-hmm. um, and I, you know Newark Rams till I die. Like I played, you know, fifteen U all the way up to seventeen U. Um, so, you know, experience playing for the North Y, rest in peace, Mr. Wembley, you know, Brian Crawford, everybody know Coach B. Coach B, um, yeah. You know, those guys, everybody that's played for the North Y, you know how special they were um, mm-hmm. and what the North Y and being a North Ram meant to you. Um, mm-hmm. it, it was like an honor, you know, to be able to be part of that organization and then to be able to play, you know, the rest of my high school career. Um, my senior year, we probably, I thought we had the best uh, AAU team. I mean, everybody on the team was all division one players, high division one players, everybody. We all had schools. So our senior year, you know, when we played AAU, everybody had either committed, had signed, already had a school. Um, 
we were just, you know, it was like, you know, just an enjoyable team to be around. Um, now, who's on that? Who's on that squad? Well, you know how at Newark wide, Mr. Wim had 15 U. You, you know, he had different teams, so you know you could be playing with a mishmash of guys, but everybody was top level. Yeah. Um, on depended on the trip you went to. You know, if you went to Boston, you mm-hmm. went out to you know Lubbock, Texas. You went down south. I mean, I played with everybody in the state from Antoine Allen, you know, Ray Good, Clifford Scott, Hassan Ellerby, Clifford Scott, Lance Miller mm-hmm. from Bridgewater, um, Mitchell Foster yeah, from Shabazz, uh, Silk Logan from Essex Catholic, mm-hmm. um, Sean Evans, Mike Boyd, you know, we um, Alonzo Spellman that played for the Chicago Bears, the lineman, mm-hmm. he played with us in a tournament in North Carolina. We picked him up on the turnpike. <laughs> and he went and played with us one day. I mean, yeah. this is what this team, you know, Alonzo was from Raincoast Valley. He was from down that way. This mm-hmm. guy was as wide as a refrigerator, but could play basketball. Yeah. And he played with us one time. So, you know, you had the whole Miller family from out here in Bridgewater, Dave, Lance. Lance was on my team. Um, Antoine Allen, you know, from, mm-hmm. from uh, Linden. Um, you know, so North Wide just had a stable. Yeah. A stable. Um, and our senior year team that we had, we had Silk, Ray Good, uh, Mitchell Foster, um, Rick Robinson from Roselle. He went out to uh, Man, West yeah, Virginia. He yeah. was on the team. Um, you know, we just had, you know, everywhere we went, we were just a confident group because we had already basically all had, you know, had our schools and we were just balling. So um, North Y is a special, special place. And anybody that, you know, we talked to from Essex County, um, it, it made me who I was. It made me confident to be able to play against anybody, anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, confident to play in the state because, you know, I'm playing with the best guys that you read about in the paper. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this guy sitting right next to you. You crowded in a van with, you know, first team all state guy. You, you know, y'all sleeping on each other, you know, in a van riding down to Boo Williams, you know. So yeah. um, family atmosphere, Mr. Wim and B took care of us like they were, we were their kids. Never had to worry about anything. Um, accommodations, we always stayed well, fed mm-hmm. us. Um, you know, the one thing my parents, you know, we, we weren't rich. Nobody was rich. My parents mm-hmm. didn't have to pay for anything for AAU. You know, we, we played, we earned it, and they mm-hmm. took care of us. So nah. um, special, special. Totally, special totally, totally. You, speaking of AAU in summertime, you mentioned, you know, uh, Immaculate playing in Bloomfield early on in your high school, then somehow make the switch over to Elwood. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, well, the, so them summer leagues, yeah. Yeah, so that was that was important because um, we had been playing in Bloomfield for a while. Um, the Elmwood League I had got from youth games because we used to play in the Elmwood League on our youth games team. Mm-hmm. So I remember going to Coach Fess, telling him, like, Coach Fess, you got to get us in this Elmwood League. Everybody's playing it. Scene yeah. Hall Prep. Barringer, uh, Weekway, you know, East Orange, everybody said, that's where it is. You know, and you know how the Elmwood Summer League was. Like, that's that was the spot. Um, for me, it also had a personal level because my dad oh, played in Elmwood Park. So I had a thing of, I got to go there and I got to represent not only Immaculate, but I got to represent the Mullins name. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of my dad's friends who he had grew up with still around. Harry James, you know, my dad knew Harry James was really close, you know, so I had to go there and make sure that I represented not only Immaculate, and I wanted to play the best in the state, you know, in in our county, um, my dad's name, you know, Mm -hmm. I couldn't go there and and be a scrub and all my dad's friends is there like, you know, oh, you you leave, you know, you can't even play, you know, so I wanted to make sure I I, I did good when I played over there. but also to we playing everybody in the county and it gave us Absolutely. an insight to the season because mm-hmm. you know you saw who East Orange had, you saw who Verona had, you saw who Seton Hall Prep had, you know. So you weren't really intimidated or afraid of playing those teams during the season and in, in, in the counties because you know you basically, you know, you played them all year long, you know. No, absolutely. And I just remember just um, being there as far as obviously I was into my freshman year, your senior, but I got opportunity, you know, to play on that team as far as in the summer mm-hmm. league, just to see you guys to kind of get a feel like, yeah, this is this is this is for real. And I think 
for Immaculate, that was like a great opportunity just based on not knocking the competition in, in the conference, but in the same breath, just seeing right. who, what else is in, in the counties here. And speaking, speaking of the conference, I know – Obviously, you get the accolades and everything else here. Mm -hmm. But one thing, you know, I, you know, we could talk years later about it. They jerked you on was the um the North South, you know, um the basketball, the All Star game that was, you know, obviously in North and South players yeah. from Jersey. How, how you get jerked and you know, while uh, Mike Fader makes the team instead yeah. of you. You know, uh, and I know it was you made first team county. I believe he made second team or whatever the case is, but he gets denied for the all star game. Is you know, yeah, I mean, again, uh, it's just kind of just putting it out there, man. I know you got, I know you got jerked for that. Well, you know, it, yeah, um, I, you know, I again, I use everything like that, man, as fuel. So mm -hmm. I, I knew about Mike Fader. One thing I knew he came to the North Y and he couldn't make it at the North Y, so that was one thing. Um, well, he, he was on the team, but he didn't, you know, make the top teams, not knocking mm -hmm. him. But, you know, again, for me, it was just challenges against individuals, always having to prove myself. Um, I know when we played Verona, I made sure I scored my highest points I've ever scored in mm -hmm. high school. I think I averaged like 30 against Verona. Um, mm -hmm. I just made sure I always put up numbers against him. Um, you know, to me, yeah, the North South was nice. I, I got a blessing though because my daughter got right. elected for North South, so I didn't get it, but my daughter got it. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm basically made it. She made it for North North South now. But for me, and you know how it was to me, the biggest honor was making first team All Essex County. To yeah, me, yeah, yes, yeah. a I hell of an honor, man. I don't care about anything else really, um, because to me that shows the respect of where I'm from and the, and who I thought were the best players, you know, in the state of New Jersey, we had the best County. I felt. Um, now who's on, who's on that squad, which let me see. I'm going to see if how much of a sports junkie I am. See if I can remember. Go ahead. Let me see. It, I had you. Uh-huh. You had Ed Foster. Uh -huh. Yeah. You had uh, Raymond Good. Yep. You had, uh, yeah, Samar. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and you had my man, I forget his first name. Jackson for me, Sean Jackson for me. Is that off? Is that everybody? Bro, you good, bro. That's bad, man. I told you, this <laughs> is how much I just enjoy. This you good. You where good. I grew you up at, man. Yeah. Yeah. And you know yeah. what the funny thing about that? And I know, like, I have the article in my room here because, like I said, that's one of my biggest trophy pieces. When they interviewed us about it, we all talked about how the connection we had with Essex County, Nork Y, and the parks locally mm -hmm. that we were all from and you look at that team all of us with north Y players mm -hmm. and we all lived in the similar neighborhoods and played each other in the parks ray good silk yeah. they literally around the corner from us right there in watson and sovereign you know sean jackson elmer park sean, okay that's his first right? name. okay at mitchell foster you know he's down at shabazz but you know we basically he was a north you know north Y player mm -hmm. member you yeah. know so we had a connect I say this, they should have added a, a, a sixth person. He went out of state, though. He went down to Oak Hill. But if Mike Boyd had a state there, that's what I always say to myself. Yeah. Who would have not been on that first team <laughs> all county if Mike Boyd had yeah, a state in Jersey? Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah. I say Mike get an honorary first team all county because even though while he was down in Oak Hill, um, you know, Mike should have, you know, he would have definitely been in as, as one of the top county players if he had a yeah. state. In absolutely, arm. absolutely, so, man. Um, so we got the the honorary, but yeah, you good, man. You got us all. You got yeah, us all. nah. So uh, and I joke to myself, some stuff I forget, some things start <laughs> coming back. You know, as we talk, remember, but yeah, I nah, I remember. I was just like, okay. And then I know, well, um, so we gotta graduate, man. You gotta walk across the stage and go to college here. I mean, I know we ended up, but what other choices you had besides going to Coastal Carolina? What other schools you were considering or have visits from? Well, see, that's the thing that I didn't. I didn't go anywhere else. I didn't visit anywhere else. I was, um, I guess, just, you know, they, they pressured me to sign early, you know, because I signed really early. I signed, like, in my junior year. Um, they came at me and offered me right away. Um, so, you know, not having my dad didn't play in college. We didn't know anything about recruiting and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, you know, I was my dad was just like, yo, you're going to school for free. You know, you yeah. play in Georgia Tech and University of Houston and Cincinnati and NC State. 
yeah, why not go down there and play? I probably go down there and, you know, and, and, and do my thing. So I was very young. It, I didn't have a recruiting process. Okay. Um, and I think that's probably one of the mistakes that I did make uh, in, in my basketball was just jumping the gun too early. But I was looking at, you know, what is free. You know, my parents ain't going to have to worry about school. I get to go to college. I get to play some good teams. I get mm -hmm. another shot at Kenny Anderson again at Georgia Tech. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I just went with it. And it was early. And, and it was an honor because it was early, you know. I mean, at that day, you know, nowadays kids are getting offers at freshmen and sophomores. Right. right. You know, we people weren't really getting offers, you know, sophomore, junior, summer, you know. Um, I got contacted by a lot of schools, Virginia Tech. Um, you know, my first contact was Notre Dame, mm -hmm. um, Richmond, um, you know, all those schools, they were originally reaching out, contacting me, um, you know, schools, a lot of the local schools, you know, none of the Rutgers, none of Seton Hall, but a lot of, I went to camps out of state. So all the really contacts I was getting was from schools down South. Okay. Um, but Coastal jumped on me early. The other schools didn't offer right away. They were just going through the recruitment process. But Coastal called and was like, we want to offer you scholarship. We want you to come right now. Like, we mm -hmm. want you here. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, poor kid from Orange, only child. You know, you, you what, 16 years old? You getting an offer for a scholarship at 16? You know, you're kind of like, yeah, you better take that, you know? Yeah. Um, so that, that was what I did, you know, and I kind of cut everything else short. Um, you know, Virginia tech was really hard on me. Um, Notre Dame, like I said, that was an honor, you know, cause that was a big, big time school. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Richmond was really on me a lot too, as well. So those were probably the, the other two that were really kind of calling me a lot. Okay. Um, but hadn't offered, you know, mm -hmm. and coastal was, you know, I had a bunch of other coastal level schools, um, George Mason, um, I forgot it's, it's a bunch of, but I mean, I had yeah. all kinds of letters and phone was ringing off the hook and stuff. Um, but coastal pushed really, really hard. I mean, they home visits, um, taking, you know, taking parents out to dinner and, and all that stuff, you know, they really courted me really well. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, again, dad never been through that. You know, nobody really told me we should right. read it out. Um, you know, I did talk to Coach Fess and them, and they just like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah. You know, my visit down there probably sold me. Um, you know, Coastal was like five miles from Myrtle Beach. Okay. So you are 16, 17-year-old kid from Orange, New Jersey, staying in a penthouse on Myrtle Beach, eating well for a weekend. Mm -hmm. um, probably going to go there, you know what I'm saying? You're probably oh, yeah, going to yeah. Um, and I, and that's what I did, man. You know, I, I heard a lot of people, well, why'd you do that? But, you know, at that time I'm like, you know what, this might be the best situation for me, you know? So I jumped on it, but got down there. South Carolina is not orange, New Jersey. That's right. You, know? <laughs> you don't have buses, corner mm -hmm. stores, parks right around. And at that time, coastal is not the coastal that you see today. Okay. Campus was not built up they didn't have the football program like they have today they didn't have the basketball program like they got an arena now you know they've changed everything but it was a smaller southern school um probably got a little homesick being that far away in, okay. you know different environment you know the south is different than being from you know basically the tri-state um basketball wise was the best basketball of my life Okay. Um, conditioning, competition. Um, played a little bit as a freshman early on. Once we got into conference play, got a little spotty. Um, and, and that bothered me. But preseason, you know, I played against, you know, I got my shot at Georgia Tech and Kenny Anderson. I had my career high. I had 11 points against them. Okay. Um, so played uh, Houston. We played Cincinnati. I saw Tish out there because, you know, he was out there playing exactly, football. Right, right. Um, so we played Cincinnati, University of Houston. You know, I got running all those games, you know, went to South Florida, played in tournaments against South Florida. You know, so great basketball, best conditioning of my life. Um, but I just probably got a little homesick, man. I just honestly, um, mm -hmm. once the season was over, there's really nothing to do. You know, it was just like couldn't go nowhere, couldn't have a car. You know, wasn't no really, wasn't a lot of girls there, you know, like you expected 
college mm-hmm. to be. Yeah. Um, so it was it was just kind of a culture shock after ba- outside of basketball. In the gym, basketball was great. Mm-hmm. You know, road trips, you play South Carolina State, you know, that's a Southern school. So uh, Southern historically black college. Oh, HBCU, so, you know, yeah. yeah, so we went there and my eyes were like, whoa, you know, this is what college is like, you know, but Coastal at that time didn't have that. You know, they weren't built up like that. Um, and I, I think I just got a little bit of like disappointment outside of the basketball. It wasn't basketball. It was more of, okay, season's over or what am I going to do? Can't go nowhere. There's no parties really. There's no girls here. There's nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sitting there eating Domino's pizza and watching Steve Urkel in the dorm every weekend. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, I can't. The question I asked myself, can I do this another three years? And the answer was not. I couldn't. Okay. Um, coming back, what happened was Coastal didn't really want me to leave, I don't think. They never granted me a release from my scholarship. They did? Okay. That's why I couldn't go anywhere else. You know, I went to Mr. Wembley, uh, he called Providence. I worked out at Wagner. I, I did all kinds of stuff. Coastal never released me from my letter of intent. So I was never able to sign with another Division I school. And, and that was what they kind of kind of blackballed me a little bit. But I never got a release from my letter of intent. I don't know if that's anything now, <laughs> this many years later. Yeah. But I couldn't, you know, all the Division I schools I went to, you know, to try and reach out to, they were like, you know, can't do anything. You know, they got to get your release. And they wouldn't do it. So my thing was, okay, I'm not sitting out because I love playing. You know, so I'm just go somewhere to play. Mm-hmm. And I knew I could go division three and play. Um, I chose Montclair at the last minute, like maybe a week before school opened in the fall, because I was still trying to get things okay. that didn't work out. Um, so I ended up just going to Montclair. It was between Keene and Montclair. Okay. And, um, you know, Montclair, um, you know, being from Montclair, you know, I was just like, all right, I'll go up there. And, um, you know, Honestly, if I could have taken Montclair State's off court and brought it down to the coastal Carolina, I would have been in coastal for four years. Okay. Okay. Um, so that was the reason. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah, I never knew that. Not even, obviously, the whole they weren't they weren't they weren't release you. So I mean, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, but that, you, that was that was my whole thing. I mean, I remember going to Mr. Wembley's office in at the North Y and he's mm-hmm. talking to Providence on the phone and you know, they're calling and trying to get things going. And they, you know, first you got to find space where there's a need, you know, so right. he, he did what he tried to do, could do. Um, and once school started getting in, okay, let's see what we can do. They had never released me from my scholarship. I actually went to Wagner on my own personal visit with my dad mm-hmm. and my uncle. Okay. I'm dressed in dress shorts and a polo shirt. The coach asked me to work out. I take my shirt off. I'm in this hot gym working out for this coach in dress shorts and polo shirt and some and some low cut sneakers. I'm working my butt off. I'm dunking. I'm doing all kinds of things. He's like, okay, hold on. Hold on. Let me go make a call. Went in his office, made a call, came back. And he's like, sorry, I can't do anything. They they won't, they won't release you. And this is Wagner. This is Wagner yeah. University. Because I was at the point like anybody. You know, I'll go to at that point. This was like right before I made the decision for Montclair State. And he was like, they just won't release you. He's like, got to work with that. So I tried, you know, I don't, I never got anything formal from Coastal Carolina to release Mm -hmm. me from that national letter of intent. Um, I did get a ring though, because we won conference championship. And I did get my conference championship ring because I was part of that. I did help, but they never released me from my, from my scholarship. From my Interesting. Life. You so you you get those life lessons, man. As they continue on, as far as things being the business, and you put your name to something, some folks gonna hold you to it, even though no way in hell Coastal playing Wagner or Providence, so it wouldn't have been no issue in regards to that. But they're like, yeah, but you just you learn the, the business of this. You yes, know what I mean? Yes, yeah. So it's yeah. helped me, you know, with my little one. You know, with her playing. You know, I I know all the pitfalls and what to do's and what not. Mm. So again, God does things for a reason. You know, he puts me through, you know, a little bit of drama uh, to kind of maybe help me for something at that time. I never knew what happened having a mm-hmm. kid, you know, playing, you know, collegiate basketball. 
No, nah, so so you get the mock list date, you play right away. I mean, it was was it, I mean, a blessing in disguise or you know, just kind of just going there. I mean, you just get to do what you love. I don't care what level it was. You was playing, you was playing basketball, and obviously you had a hot plate not too far if you needed it. Yeah, it, it was it, it was to the point, like you said, when you love love something and you've been doing it all your life, you know, we go back through that history of starting in Die Town. Mm-hmm. Uh, it kind of brought me full circle because now I'm home and my family's there, my friends are there, my city is there, my town is there, my hood is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Washington's came to my game, Bryce came to my game, you know, yeah. my boys came to watch me play, my family was there to watch me play. Um, you know, so it brought me full circle to where I started from. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was important to me playing. And it at the point, yeah, you, you can see the difference. Um, not knocking anybody playing Division Three because there was some really good Division Three ball players that ran through the same thing I did. They were Division One things and work out. They come back and play. Rowan University literally had a full Division One roster. They had a guard from Clemson. They had guards from you know these these yeah. guys were not shabby players. You know, I had a first team All County teammate playing up there. Ray Good was up there with me as well when I first got there. Okay. So it wasn't like, you know, you dropping back to, you know, some guys that can't dribble and chew gum at the same time. You know, Jersey City State, Mr. Brown, he had basically Brown, yeah. a Division One program. You know, mm-hmm. everybody, can, you know, things happen. You know, everybody may not have went to Division One or got overlooked. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the NJAC has some tough teams, man. They had some tough players, you know. Yeah, it wasn't – everybody there wasn't Division level, Division One level. But you had some guys that were definitely Division One level that I went up against and played with, um, and it was no doubt about it. It was just things happen, breaks happen, gr- could be grades, lack of recruitment, overlooked situation like me transfer, um, you know. But it was the it was so fulfilling to play at Montclair, even though we didn't win a lot of games. Mm-hmm. It was just fulfilling because one, you got a chance to play. Two, you got a chance to play with your family and friends there. Um, and then you you basically represented your hood again. You kind of went back to that. And, you know, you know, I was able to be pretty successful there as well, you know, um, which was all all good. And then all great friends, roommates, you know, teammates, mm-hmm. um, just off court, like I said. If I could have took Montclair and took it down to South Carolina, you know, as an off court, um, yeah. I, I would have. And I did better academically there too, as well, you know. So um, it was good experience, you know, even though we, like I said, we didn't win a lot, but, you know, building that program, you know, Keith Hines came there right afterwards. Keith Roberts from Clifford Scott ended up mm-hmm. coming up there playing kind of same situation, went to Wagner, you know, and then yeah. coming over. So you never, you didn't have, you know, what you quote unquote division three players. You had a lot of guys there that could play ball that were division one level players that just things happen, you know? No, nah, absolutely not. Now they do. And then you get done. Obviously there's basketball everywhere. Did you consider any prospirations and trying out whether it was the NBA or just going overseas or doing anything? Yeah. I had a, a offer to play in Sweden actually right after I finished at Montclair state. Um, the thing was, it wasn't one of the top leagues, so the money wasn't really, you know, mm-hmm. worth going over there. Taxes would have probably ate all of it. Um, literally, we, I went to an uh, overseas tryout. It was down at St. Peter's College. Okay. Um, played there. A uh, guy offered me to go to Sweden and play. He wanted – we played – worked out that weekend. He was like, I need you to fly out that Monday. And I'm like, you know, you know, at that time, I'm like, whoa, I don't know about that. How much are you talking about? So, right. you know, it wasn't really, um, you know, a lucrative thing. I could have done it. You know, I know a lot of guys that I played with, they took that chance and just said, you know what, I'm going to go play overseas a couple of years. Me, I was just like, eh, I don't know. You know, I, I don't know about that. You know, I could have, I could have packed my bags and flew over there. Um, you know, I just, you know, at that point, I was just like, you know what, I'll keep trying. Um, I did get in contact with the Utah Jazz. Um, Mm -hmm. I had sent some film out to them, was trying to work on getting out into their summer league. Um, But they had brought in another guy. You might have heard of this guy named John Crotty from Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah. they went to Virginia. Yeah, yeah, went to Virginia. 
um, they have brought him in instead for that last spot for the summer league. So I think I missed that. I was working with their East Coast scout, um, has sent them some film. Um, you know, he wanted to, I think he had men came and watched me play in the Pro-Am League in Orange at Central Playground. Um, but then he called me, he's like, you know, they gave the spot to Crotty, you know, for the summer league. So, you know, just a, a nickel too, you know, nickel too late. Yeah. Um, you know, it didn't happen. And, you know, I was just like, all right, I'll keep playing in the Pro-Am Leagues and, you know, see what happened. At that point, too, I got a job offer as well that actually paid me more money than playing basketball. So, okay. you know, that was another reason why, okay, do I still want to go to Sweden, you know, to try and do this or, you know, make money, you know. So, I, you know, I got a pretty decent job right out of school. Um, you know, I still was playing pro-am ball, you know, in the parks and summer league, did that for a little bit. And then, you know, just kind of, you know, play it when I want to and then kind of fade it on out, you know. Well, as you fade it out, I mean, you obviously married, you know, states, obviously from high school and everything, mm -hmm. and your little one fades in, you know. Yeah, like how, said, how's yeah, that been? Like I said, I think God does everything for a reason. You know, mm -hmm. 30 years ago, you don't know why things are happening to you the way they are. But I think, you know, he has a master plan of what's in the future. You know, mm -hmm. uh, never thought I would have a child to play, you know, basketball, let alone a girl. You know, when I had my, when I found out I was having a daughter, I was like, wow, you know, a, a girl, how am I going to do that? You know, mm -hmm. I can't teach her how to play ball because she's a girl, you know, but um, life changed, you know. Um, it has been a blessing and a curse. Okay. Um, curse because, you know, one, she's a girl and I wanted mm -hmm. to be a girl and always stay a girl, but she was blessed with athleticism and ability. Where'd she, where she get that from? I wonder. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But she's a really good athlete for female. Mm -hmm. So almost the same path like me. I put her in tennis, soccer, lacrosse. You know, she did all of that stuff. Basketball. You know, I said, okay, here, do the ball, you know. Um, you know, volleyball, everything. You know, she, she's done a little bit of everything. Um, but again, somehow basketball, she kind of was really, really good at, you know, at an early age. It's funny. We have some of her little uh, third and fourth grade uh, rec league games. And first of all, she's bigger than everybody at the time. And she could actually make layups and shoot jump shots at that time, yeah. you know. So she picked the game up pretty early. Um, and, you know, it's been a curse because, like I said, me playing, you know, expectations – one thing I didn't want to do was coach her. And I right. did. I've never mm -hmm. coached her because I knew the expectation that could be being a former player um, is bad enough being a parent. I knew right. how it would have been being a coach. So I uh, decided coach not you. to coach her. Huh? Yeah. No, I'm saying, yeah, you coaching, you would, um, your nights would have been sleeping right where you're at. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Downstairs yeah. in the family room. So yeah. I, I just, you know, I said, you know, I taught her in the park. It got to a stage where, you know, even that, that became a mm -hmm. you know thing. My wife was like, y'all got to stop. She's either going to stop playing or you're going to stop acting, you know, like that. So what I did is I went out and, you know, nowadays they have trainers. I found, you know, probably one of the best trainers in basketball in New Jersey, Eric Myrick. If anybody mm -hmm. out there got a kid that want to train, just, just old school, fundamental basketball, train just like to me, how my dad trained me. Mm -hmm. um, huge fan of Mr. MJ back there. So his training yeah. regiments are, are very similar to that mid-range game, pull-up jump shots. And that that was me. You know, that's what I, I liked. So we kicked it off. I handed her off to him. And, you know, they've been running since. One thing I did do is I took her to New York to play. You know, we were kind of in the suburbs here. Um, she didn't, she didn't have a back to play in. She didn't have the parks to play in. Right. So I sacrificed her eighth grade to high school year playing in the city. So we basically lived in Brooklyn. Um, one of my close brothers and family that I've met later on in life, um, mm -hmm. coaches at South Shore High School in Brooklyn and they South Shore High School took her in. She actually was getting ready to go to school in New York. They really wanted her to go play at, at South Shore in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. um, coach over there is a great, 
was a great mentor, great guy for her. Basically gave her her opportunity, opened her up, exposed her to a lot of people, um, took her everywhere. We played in everywhere, Queens, East New York, Bronx, um, every borough, you know, places that she, you know, basically had never imagined being in. Mm -hmm. um, summer leagues in New York is, is, is you know, what that's like. Right. Dykeman at, at Rucker, you know, um, she played in all of that, you know, and um, it, it platformed her to this next day. So that's really how her path went, you know, um, just uh, going from, you know, just being a girl athlete um, to getting exposed to the city game and then, you know, playing in high school. Now, it's interesting you, you talk about that as you're just sharing that story. You could just hear the pride in your voice, man. I just think about, obviously, you know, Mr. Mullins and you, you know, it was just <laughs> it's a microcosm. There's it's the, so many parallels. You know, I mean, you know, as far as, you know, obviously things have changed regarding um, leagues and folks traveling a little bit more. But the same, the, the bottom line, the baseline, as far as just him just you know, teaching you, coaching you, and wanting to see you do well, putting you in, you know, from the beginning, whether it was educationally, but athletically, you know, um, you just see the, the parallels. I mean, as far as, I mean, I know she's the only child, you know, the same thing as far as that go, a lot, lot of parallels there. And, you know, and as you're just thinking, only thing you're probably missing is, you know, one of your father go to, go to comments. Come on, son. Come on, <laughs> right. son. I could yeah. say that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know that as Mr. Mullins, one of his little go-tos. Uh, uh -huh. you know, as you say, now, yeah, you couldn't be like, come on, son. Yep. Yeah, that was like one of his things here. But yeah. so many parallels, man, as far as that goes here, man. And to your point, you know, um, you no, know, you know, God has a plan, man. And, you know, and, and that was the plan that was laid out, you know, for you here, man. It sounds like it's, it's just been a joy. Totally just been a joy, man. And uh, definitely, man, that, that's great. That's great stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's been a, a interesting journey. I wouldn't change it. Um, one thing I did, like you said, man, I I didn't forget my foundation. I mm -hmm. didn't forget, you know, my family, where I came from, the people I grew up with. Um, you know, it, it, going back to where we started, you know, Dodd Town has made me yeah. who I am. Um, you know, from the foundation, you know, and and growing up, and then seeing the younger guys like yourself you know, coming up and growing up in that neighborhood, you know, it was just a sense of pride that I've always had in my life to make sure I had to represent, you know, where I'm from on, yeah. in a positive light, whether it's in, you know, on the court, whether it's, you know, now in life in a boardroom or, you know, on the sideline cheering on my kid or, or whatever, um, you know, it always circles back to that pride that I have from, you know, where I was raised, who I was from, Mm -hmm. you know, where I came from and, and the people, you know, our, our brothers that are with us still and the ones that have left us, right. you know, all those people have, have influenced my life in a certain way, you know, for myself, you know, setting a good role model and example for, you know, you guys coming up, mm -hmm. you know, in the neighborhood and, and then being proud to see you guys being, you know, the top players in the county, you know, mm -hmm you, you know, two sport athlete superstar, you know, football, basketball, you know, it, it, that, that stuff just made me proud, man. You know, know that, you know, I, I come from the same, you know, beginnings and, and, and neighborhood from, you know, these guys, you know, and, and it was just really good. So, you know, it's yeah, been, a, guys, been a great journey, man. Now that's, that's all you guys, man. in regards to that, man, um, in regards to, Sports, man, like what stuff has stuck with you from sports that, you know, you keep in mind and um, to this day? Uh, pride, mm -hmm. work ethic, confidence, um, and, and your foundation is important. Mm -hmm. um, and I've used everything from sports to help me in my professional career outside of sports. Um, everything, and you know this, and every athlete knows this, everything you learn in your journey through sports translates over to you in the real world, you know, and that's mm -hmm. one of the things I'm trying to show my daughter now as she's getting toward that real world, you know, line, everything you've dealt with from the time you were, you know, in rec league in third and fourth grade, all through high school, all through the days in the park, all through getting upset at me and upset at coaches, helps you once you become an adult, a parent, 
a, a mm-hmm. grown up. Um, and that's what I did. I, I took all my experiences, man, and just it's prepared me for everything I've dealt with after high school and after sports. Um, the travel, um, like I was at Montclair, I got a chance to play in Spain, man. We went to Spain and played. Yeah. Um, you know, I probably would have never gone to Spain any other way other than by playing basketball. So that exposed me to a different culture at a younger age. Whereas mm-hmm. now, you know, I'm older and I go abroad or overseas, you know, I've, I've been there. I understand how to, you know, survive in other cultures and in, in overseas and stuff. So um, it's just been a blessing with sports, man. Um, and I think every young person, every kid, every child, male or female, should participate in some type of sport. If it's not basketball, any type of organized sport where it teaches you those disciplines, that pride, that work mm-hmm. ethic, um, you know, your foundation and, and, and fundamentals of, of things, it, it just makes you a more rounded person later on. Nah, absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. I can totally second that, man. I, and one, just thanks for just taking time out, man. Before we go, though, just want to put you on spot for you know, a couple of questions here. Hopefully it ain't, it ain't too much, and hopefully, you know, you, you can you can get through it. So that's all right. All right, yeah, we'll try. My wife my wife said, don't be surprised if it puts you on the spot. <laughs> so I'm ready that's for funny, it. That's funny. That's funny. So uh, when when you're in the whip driving in New Jersey, what are we doing? Are we doing a turnpike or a parkway? Parkway, bro. Parkway. Parkway. Carroll Street or Burnside Street? Carroll all the way, bro. You know that. We repping. We, we Carroll <laughs> Street boys. You know that. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, we Carroll Street boys. You know that. We are. <laughs> but all love right. all the brother side. Burnside, you know, the square. Yeah, the square, you know, boulevard, everything. Boulevard, yeah. you know. We, we got the street, the street everything, yeah. You know, us and the, me and you and the Washingtons are the Cow Street boys. You know that, yeah, right? <laughs> absolutely, man. Absolutely. We got uh, the back or Nork Y? Two. Oh, man. Why you ask me that one? <laughs> Can I say both? Yeah, <laughs> it's, your, say, it's your answer. Yeah, it's your answer. I got to say both in different generations. Different generations because the back is the start. And Newark Y was the finish in you know plateau. But yeah, both special. I'm gonna tell you about the back, man. I don't know if you remember this, but I sure as hell do. Um only time in my life I've been dunked on is by you in the back. <laughs> Me? I, I, yeah, I was telling, I was actually telling my wife this. I was just like, yeah, you know, um, only time I ever ever been dunked on. I don't know what the hell I was thinking that day. You know, um, it was actually you caught me from the side. So I know someone back then had a camera phone or something and I would have just been a meme for days. Yeah. And I just remember like you, you caught me out and I, I made an exit to just head back home and you wind up just uh, uh, pulling me back in as far as I, I actually, I was leaving. I was just going to go back to the crib and just <laughs> and, and soak. Yeah. I, so that's, I know you don't remember, but I, I don't totally remember, man. Nah, nah, probably too many people you know you know banged on. But like I said, I was one of them, and like I said, that's the only time that's ever happened in my life. Really? I, yeah. So I just kind of just one of those things. Now, I mean, from then on in, I knew you, you ain't in nobody the close ever facility. I'm just yeah, I just you know, obviously I'm stepping away, man. But <laughs> yeah, that's the only time in my life. But nah, so now nah, that's cool with the back or what have you here. Here's another one: um, sandwiches or Star Tavern. Oh, sandwiches, unlimited. What I you know getting? Star Tavern got the best pizza in the world, but got to go with sandwiches. Pastrami, hot pastrami. Okay. Yeah, sandwiches right. on Main Street, bro. Sandwiches, okay. Oh, uh, you need some kicks back when? Like, where are you going to pick them up? Where are you going to get them from? <sighs> a couple of spots. You go to, uh, what's the one on Bloomfield? You can um, go there. That's right, something oh, world. Yeah, Secret, Secret world. world, or you going okay. on Main Street. What was yeah, that the shoe spot? Yeah, the shoe yeah, spot. The shoe spot. So those are the two. Those are the two. Matter of fact, me and Mike Boyd, when we went to youth games, we got the Patrick Ewans, Ewans. the red and white Patrick <laughs> Ewans. I got a picture. We mm. were the only two that had them when we went down to Alabama. All mm. the chicks was loving us because we had yeah. these sneakers that nobody had ever seen before. Got Down them from Main yeah. Street at the shoe spot. Mm-hmm. Mike was like, yo, we got to get them Ewans, bro. I was like, all right. He had yeah. them. I got them. So I got to go with Main Street then because we got those hot uh, Ewans, the red and white ones for the UK. Okay. So I'll go with Main Street, shoe spot. 
best game you ever played in your life. No, no matter the level, who I don't know, college, pro, grammar school, summer leagues, best game you, you ever played. Eighth grade, I had my career high ever. I had 46 points. For you remember Eighth who you played against? Uh, I think it was Lady of Lords. Okay. From West Orange. West Orange, right. West Orange. I have 46. And I know Mr. Boston gave me the scorebook after the game. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody had ever scored 46 points, I guess, in there. But that was my career high was 46. And probably the best game because I don't – that day the rim looked like it was an ocean. Yeah. Like, you know how you say you have that one game? I mean, I've had some other good ones in high school, some real good ones in college, but I have to say that eighth grade one was where you, where I had that ocean rim look. Um, it looked like everything I put up, you know, it felt like I was putting the ball in the basket every five yeah. seconds. And I probably yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a heck of a feel. Now, high school, what was your, your career high in high school? Uh, I think it was 37, and that was against Verona, because I told you mm -hmm. I had that little chip on my shoulder against Fader. Uh, okay. I think it was either it was either 35 or 37. I know I had 32 against them one game, and then I think the other one was either 35 or 37. So 30s in high school, college at Montclair, I had a couple of 30 point games at Montclair. Okay. Um, but yeah. Well, at least I could feel a little better about that dunk. I at least got you on that one. I think I had a few 38s, and I know the high was uh, 39. So at least that'll be – still don't take away all the agony from that being dunked on, but <laughs> I, I, I live with that, man. No, that, yo, that, that's, uh, <laughs> that, that's, good, that's a good badge to have, bro, when you got a few 30s on your plate. Yeah. Uh, that, that's enough to brag about. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Best team you ever been on? Ooh. It's going to be between that eighth grade youth games and my North Y team. I'm going to say the North Y team just because we were older and more mature at the time. Okay. Um, and one through, you know, 10, you know, everybody was division one. You know, you're talking about top players in the state, top players in that class. Um, probably that North Y team, our AAU team was, was the best um, okay. in that whole year. Um, second would be that youth games team, you know, because you got Bobby and Jerry. and But we were young at the time, you know, so um, it, we were still learning and developing. But that that um, that AAU team was special, um, that group, Mitchell Foster, mm -hmm. Rick Robinson, you know, Antoine Allen, uh, Mike yeah. Boyd, you know, Ray Good, Samar. I mean, you know, these are, you know, probably Essex County legend, you know, guys. Um, but yeah, I would say that team. Uh, yeah. Immaculate, you know, our, our senior year team was good. Um, but I probably have to say, you know, just because of the number of high level people that were on that AAU team, I would have to put them a little bit, you know, above that at the time. Yeah. And I would say, even with that, Mac, I'm poking fun at you guys. And I said something like, like Tish about it. You know, speaking of Samar, they came up in that gym and ran y'all up out of your own gym on TV. Yeah, I thought I was hoping you would bring that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, that one, um, it, it's funny because, you know, Essex Catholic, we knew all those dudes. You know, they, they yeah. literally were family members of us, seeing them in the barbershop, seeing them mm -hmm. in the parks every day. You know, so it was a huge, you know, t had hit that big shot the year before. Right, you know, right. Down in the valley where we beat them, you know, so they had a real chip on their shoulder. But it was a different team that year because they had seniors that had Spank and Rossi Kirsten had graduated. They were seniors. But mm -hmm. that younger group of Lance Andrews, Ray Bastion, Silk, you know, they, they were there. They were younger, but they felt that pain. Yeah. And um, that's probably it, the biggest game that I've ever played in in my life. Yeah. You talk about um, crowd, um, just the aura of the game, the intensity of the game. Um, that's probably the biggest game that I've ever played in. Um, and, and it hurts the most because of what happened. But those guys, they were so passionate about that game. They were literally – and I talked to Ray and them – uh, a couple of times later in life. And they told me like they were in the locker room crying before the game. They were so yeah. emotionally 
ready for that game. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, Lance Andrews has always been one of my, you know, guys that I played with since grammar school, Mm -hmm. you know, and again at the park, Ray Bash and all them guys from Savo, you know, they, they literally, and they, you know, they, every time they see me, you know, they, yo, remember that game, even the older ones, Ross and and, and Spank and all of them, they all talk about that game. Um, They were, that's one of those games where I don't think no matter what we did, they were just so emotionally charged for that game mm-hmm. that, you know, it would have been hard to do. One of the things I think hurt us, we shouldn't have played them at Immaculate. Immaculate was too small because mm-hmm. they put a press on us that just made the court Even feel smaller, like, it, yeah. yeah, if we had to play them in the Valley, it would have been different, bigger. But, you know, at Immaculate, it was like playing, you know, and they put on a press and it just made it tough for us, man. They, they would just, from tip, to the final buzzer, man, they were on all cylinders. They played on yeah. total, total emotion, total anger. I mean, they were upset. They were, mm-hmm. they were just emotionally. And they told me, it was like, we was in the locker room crying before the game because we just wanted to, you yeah. know, get us. So yeah, it's probably the toughest. I, I was hoping you didn't bring that up, man. Yeah, no, no, no. Jog my memory as we just sit here talking, man. You know, I mean, poke fun at it. Obviously, right. you know, I so, felt it being part of Immaculate. And obviously it was that Essence Catholic thing because my senior year, they did the same thing in the counties to us. So uh, really? yeah, yeah, it was just, they just had, just had a number for, for a few go rounds here. Yeah, man. yeah. What uh, best coach you ever played for? My dad, probably. Yeah, you know dad. what? I, I thought you was dad. gonna, I, knew, I had a feeling you was gonna say that. Dad, yeah. Um, I, you know, just the, you know, everybody might've thought, oh, your dad's tough on you, hard on you, you know, I mean, he's a ten, he's an intense guy, mm-hmm. um, but got the best out of me. Yeah. Um, never bothered me. Never, like I, like the way my dad was and the way my daughter reacts to me, mm-hmm. it was different. Like I would never go home and be like, telling my mom, like dad yelled at me and stuff like that. I, his every word was like, okay, I gotta do that. Like, I gotta, I gotta get it done. I gotta, yeah. you know. So, um, yeah. He, and it was just, I played to not disappoint. Like, I had to, you know. He taught me this. You know, he's got my back, and I gotta represent my name. You know. Mm-hmm. So, um, he he was always harder because he coached me. So he was always harder on me than he would be other kids. You know, you, a lot of people think your dad's gonna be favoritism for you because he's coaching you. No, no, no. He he was harder on me to be the best that I could be. And that work ethic and that um that love, I call it love, you know, these tough love basically, mm-hmm. uh, made me deal with a lot of different challenges, you know, in basketball and coaches like, you know, if I could play for my dad, I could play for anybody, you know That's what I'm right. saying? Because <laughs> nobody was yelling at me like him, nobody was pushing me like him, even in college, you know, the coaches, I mean, they were good coaches. Um, but you know, they, they never put any fear in me or, or, or anything like that. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. Uh, someone who should have made it. <laughs> I, well, I'll say this, if we all made it because we, we here, we're blessed, but I know what you're talking about NBA wise and, uh, league wise and making that, that type of money, um, from our era we got a lot of dudes that could have made it. Um, I, I keep saying this and, you know, I, I, I'm going to say, first of all, I'm going to say myself, you know, cause mm-hmm. I'm always going to be pumping myself. I'm never going to, yeah. but I think, you know, my partner from orange, I think Mike Boyd should have made it too. Um, um, he would have been a really good guard at, at that. Um, you know, Chris Jordan, like I said, I don't yeah, know what happened yeah. to him, but um, when you look at size and talent, and ability, he probably was the one that I would have thought at an early age, like, yo, this guy's gonna be a pro. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say probably Chris, you know, was was probably one of the ones that I really thought would be, you know, somebody on television outside of you know my dream of myself. You know, I, I really always thought me and Mike was you know the best two guards that ever played. So we we just you know that's just the pride and, and friendship that I had with him, you know, and respect that I had with him for his game. 
Um, but I would probably say Chris Jordan. If, if you take us out of the picture, I would say Chris Jordan is probably the one that I thought should have made it um, just with his sheer you know, ability and talent. No, he was tough, man. Now, Essex County wise, if you was to, um, you got Gauchos coming down to um, Central Playground. You got mm -hmm. five. What five from your era, or you can mention another era? What five from Essex County you, you playing with them against? Uh, Let's uh, we'll break it down. Who, who's your who's your who's your point? Who's uh, your one? Yeah, Ed, point guards, man. Ed, you know that this is a tough one, brother. <laughs> you got a lot, and you said Essex County, man. You can go County, back yeah. to Earl Flanagan, Mark Brown. All these guys are from Essex. They're point guards. I mean, I mean the fun of it. We're gonna leave people out. This is the fun uh, of it. Yeah, they, um, they'll be all right. Oh, oh, oh. I, I'm gonna stay biased to our era. Um, I'm I'm gonna put Mike at the point, Mike Boyd. Um, uh, who's your two? Like I said, backcourt. Me and him. I'm putting me and him you're, in the backcourt. You're Mike. Who's the three? Um, now, when I'm looking at the three, who you got to give me a six person to a bench. I'm uh, looking at I'm looking at probably Silk. Okay. You know, I'm getting biased, man. You that's know? cool. That's cool. That's so, so that you got him at the three. Got... Three because Silk was six seven could shoot. You know what I'm saying? A handle. And then I got my man Ray Good was a muscle, you know. Okay. He was a little shorter, but was the muscle and could finish against everybody. So I'm, keep him at the fact, four. He's at the four. Yeah, at the four. Matter of fact, I'm taking my county five. <laughs> that's I know you. That's a bailout, but I'm we're, we're no, going with it. No, bro. But look, Mitch, Mitchell Foster was six nine, bro. Yeah, yeah. He's now, my, you know, he's. But then you yeah. look at, you know, but then so I that means Mike at, comes off the bit because I know obviously. So that's your six, Mike. Be the six. six yeah, nine. yeah. I'll probably take us six, bro. I take yeah. us six. I take our our county five. I would have put up against anybody. Yeah, uh, but then you got some greats. You know, you got the Shabazz crew, Alry Blackman and yeah. Reggie Collins. You know, these are guys that were seniors when I was freshmen, mm -hmm. and I watched them playing mm -hmm. against them. So you know, I have mad respect for that crew down there and Shabazz. You know, Alry and Reggie Collins. Mm -hmm. um, they had another kid named Ice. He was good, you know. Um, you know, Eric Williams was after he was doing you after, guys. yeah, a couple of years before me, yes, <laughs> yeah. Sure. But they always had six nine dudes down at Shabazz, so I always respected the Shabazz crew because you know, one, they had dudes that could ball and it was big, you know, they always mm -hmm. seemed to come out somebody six nine. I'm like, damn, where the hell are all these dudes coming from in Newark? It's six nine, you know. But, um, then does you your team back. win? Does your does that squad win? I just squad win. Yeah, I think we win, man. Um, okay. Like I said, we had everything. Mm -hmm. We had the size. You had shooters. You had, you know, quickness. You had athleticism. Um, you know what I'm saying? We we definitely had the size because I mean, we going back then six nine and six seven was pretty, you know, pretty big back then. You mm -hmm. know, and we got that on our front line. And then you know, like I said, Ray was a little shorter, but he played bigger. Than his height, you know, and he was strong. Um, yeah. And I just thought, you know, athletically, I think me and Mike would have been, you know, the probably best, you know, with the athleticism that we had and the different skill set. Mm -hmm. um, I think we would have gave anybody a, a good, we would have gave anybody a good go. That's a tough, tough squad, man. Tough squad. Couple more, man. I'll leave you uh, alone, man. Uh, better player, Lee Mullins or Olivia Mullins? <laughs> <laughs> you should have heard my wife upstairs. She could hear you. She's like, damn. Um, shoot. I'm going to be honest. My kid is probably better, man. Okay. Um, she's a better basketball player, like skill-wise. Um, I relied a lot on athleticism, you mm -hmm. know, uh, being able to jump a little bit, you know, having a little bit of ranginess and height. That helped me a lot. She's a better shooter, better ball handler. She has a better... IQ. She's a she's actually a point guard. Like she's a point guard okay. um, that can actually score. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't. I was just score. You know, I just put the ball in the hoop. Find out how to put the ball in the hoop. So I would say, as an overall better player, she is. But I think the motor and hunger. I got that one. Like okay, the killer. Like I, I play with a chip every time. She mm -hmm. doesn't play with a chip every time. She's a nice girl and she plays. So 
Yeah. But as a skilled player, she's probably better than me all around as a basketball player. Better handle, better jump shot. Um, yeah, she's probably a better one than me. Uh, good stuff, man. My last one, man. This this uh this West right here. What would you tell the the senior high school West? What advice would you give him? Hmm. Patience. Okay. Patience. Be patient. Um, take back a couple of games where I would have done some things different. You know, a couple of those losses. Mm-hmm. A little more aggressive. A little more. Um, you know, I play those games. You know, if you know, as an athlete, your mind becomes like a computer. Yes. You know, those games are vivid to me in my mind, even at this old age, I can remember what I was thinking about at certain times on the court, a um, little more patience um, and being a little more assertive in certain situations. Um, but overall patience, especially with the college decision, you know, mm-hmm. um, that would probably be the biggest thing kind of taking my time and going through that process longer instead of cutting it real short. Um, but yeah, patience and a little more input in certain areas as, as to the senior West. Nah, Everything definitely. else, you know, I keep it the same. Nah, nah. One thing I keep the same is as far as, man, just my appreciation for you, man. I know, well, obviously, growing up in the same complex, like I said, you know, 20, 30 yards from each other for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, and just watching you, again, as far as just athletically, man, just what you did and what you became, man. Like I said, I... You know, uh, I had a I had a measuring stick. You know, as far as in regards to yourself, to all the other um, big homies in the neighborhood, as far as you know, things that they accomplished as well too, man. It was just kind of like, you know, um, I got I got to figure it out. I'll figure it out somehow, some way here, man, to to get to it, if not get you know pretty close to it, man. And I think just watching you, just just your whole elevation, man, and just your joy for playing again. You could just tell. I mean, you mentioned the motor and all that, but it was still the love that you always have for the game, man. You know, um, I know you got the guy behind you, uh, you know, the Jordan jersey and all that. I know that was your that that's your guy and everything too. It, you know, emulated him in a lot of ways. But bottom line, you asked your own name as far as me talking about. You no, know, as this is Catholic talking about immaculate. But like I said, I know this is uh this is more close to home here as far as talking to you here, man. And and I think um, you know, even me going to immaculate, it was just kind of one of those things like I, uh, you know, whether you know you also obviously Mark being there, you know, I think it was just kind of one of those things here, like you know. I got I got to achieve something to do something here, man, as far as to to make you guys proud, man. And I think just based on, like I said, and I think even outside of basketball, just the man you've become, man, just kind of just still modeling myself kind of like, wow, that's that's great, man. As far as you, you know, you found your niche and, you know, uh, professionally or what have you, man. And how ironic you have a daughter. I have a daughter, you know, yes, um, right. just kind of how that, how that stuff, that irony plays out in regards to that, man. And just kind of just listening to the joy that you have, just talking about her, just things that you've done with her. You know, I'm, I'm making mental notes here along the way as, you know, um, as my little one gets older here, man. But I just think like, uh, even in regards to things that you've done, even, um, even with the cookouts you've done, I know pre COVID and, pre for Olivia got busy with, you know, her basketball in the summertime where you had to postpone a couple of them, man. Just seeing those, man, and this is my fan moment. Like, even going to those, I know you had, uh, you know, even 30 years later, I'm still getting fanned out. You know, I'm invited to, you know, your cookout. You go there, you know, me and Raymond Good, they never spoke a word to each other in our lives, but I know that was him. You know, while, you know, Majet's there, you know, just kind of things that he done. You know, well, I think Dimitri might have been that one. You know, I, I get fanned out. You know what I mean? Just kind of the <laughs> folks around the way here. You know, I, I keep it to myself, but obviously I don't, you know, just, just sharing it now. And and also just being fanned out even from everybody in the complex being there, man. Just kind of like, wow, this is good stuff in a positive atmosphere where, you know, everybody, you know, you know, whatever else they were doing, taking a day out just to kind of celebrate and have a good time, man. You know, you know. Didn't make all of them, but just kind of just to be there, that fan in me comes out, man. And I think even now, you know, I was just telling, you know, I was telling my wife just kind of like, yeah, you know, this is the big homie. This is everything else, man. This is who I, you know, try to, you know, emulate in some ways here or at least, you know, put my own stamp on things here. Because again, you guys, from you to Latish to, you know, pre immaculate folks, and then even outside of immaculate, you're talking about the North Y. Again, I remember. Like I said, practicing down there, you know, um, younger, watching you guys practice, like Dan, you know, just watching all that in the summer league we shared about, you know, Elwood, me sitting on the bench, 
just watching you guys do your thing here, man. So like I seen your progression, I've seen everything, man. And and like I said, I'm just, you know, just just honored to say that, you know, to be be a little homie, man. And I think it's just kind of one of those things. It's it's been cool. And I just want to say I'm just like very, very like you know, the proud of you as far as not only what you've done in the past, what you've become, you know, the husband and father that you are here, you know, as far as just the pride and joy. It's far between anybody marries. You know, I know it sounds corny. Marriage, their high school sweetheart. That don't happen. That don't ha- <laughs> you know, that don't happen. That, that, that doesn't happen nowadays, you know. Uh, but just the kind of, just the whole thing, man. And I think, like I said, I'm just proud, man. You being officially you, you know, just helped me become officially me, man. And like I said, I just wanted to say thank you. When it's bro, all said and done, bro, thank you. You know the love. You know where we come from. You know what our story is. You know what our connection is. Right. Like it's almost, you know, you can't put it in words, bro. You know, you got to live it to understand the connection that we have. And, you know, like you say, you're proud of us. I mean, think about how I feel seeing you, you know, being the man that you are right now, you know, and what you've become and watching all the things that you did. And we talked the other day. I told you, like, when you look at your podcast and you look at the connections that you have and the people you have you know, connected with through your life with athletics and school and stuff like that. That list is is pretty amazing. You know, a lot of people know who you are or have connected with you, man. So mm-hmm. um, that, that you know, has, has made me proud. I, from afar, you know, I, I move on, but I, I hear what's going on back at home. I kept in touch with what you were doing. I knew what achievements you were achieving. And you talk about proud. I mean, come on, man. Like, how could I not be? You know, this is my little bro, like mm-hmm. you said, from 20 yards down the door from the doorstep. Seeing you literally being born and grown into a man, I mean, that is something special, man. And, you know, my goal, like I said, was always to make sure I represent it well. And I hope that the things that I did, you know, did help, you know, people. Um, and I look at yourself. And I'm like, you know, if I help this young man get to where he is, mm-hmm. then I must have did something right because, you know, we got a really good young man here, got a family. You know, my thing, my advice to with the daughter, you know, like I said, we were on the same path. I, I take love any her. advice for the daughter. Love yeah. her, bro. <laughs> Just love her. Love yeah. her. Yeah. Daddy be daddy forever, no matter yeah. what. You know, if she plays sports, not plays sports, be daddy first because that's important yeah. to them. Um, you know, in our society, having that nucleus family and that male figure for female, what, you know, we always talk about males having a male figure. It's more important for the females. Mm-hmm. So just love her, be dad. I know you, you're the best dad in the world. I know that because um, you, you're a good man. So um, you should be proud of yourself, bro, of, of what you've done and what you've accomplished where you've been, the people you know, and what you're doing. And super proud of you, man. Like, you know, this this is an honor today. Um, and, you know, cookouts, yeah, man, I I've, I wish we could have had more, uh, but mm-hmm. I, I do those because I want to, you know, um, just enjoy, celebrate life and celebrate the people of our lives. So hopefully after this COVID stuff, we can, you know, celebrate that post-COVID one. That'll be even really nice, man. And um, get through that but if keep doing what you're doing brother you know uh just proud and good to see you looking good man looking like you're taking care of yourself i see the beautiful family you have um you know god bless you bro and, and same with you. super super proud of you man and always here for you brother you know that now nah, i appreciate it man and definitely send my best you know stays to your mom and your pops and everybody man like i said my regards to them will do bro same to the family Mom, dad, sis, everybody tell me I said hello, bro. Nah, thanks, Wes. And um, I'm right. sure we'll definitely be in touch. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate yes, you, sir, man. Bro. All, All right. right. Talk to you. All right. That's what it is, man. You know, I'm conversating with the big homie, man. Like I said, cool. Here's some things I never even knew. Um and kind of refresh some things I was aware of. But when it's all said and done, man, like it's just great to still keep those connections, you know, while um, whether growing up or just obviously, you know, this is my county all day, no segment here. Just just hearing some stuff, man, just some athletes that, you know, they've done their thing, man, not only on the court, but become, continue to be great people, man. So on that note, I'm going to slide out. Put my hand over my heart. That means I feel you. Yeah.
Slow.